I get this uh, room clear. I'm gonna bring in the actors and uh, the director to run run this through. 53 Echo, take three. Marker. It's a kids movie at heart <laughs> for children. <laughs> I had an idea one night, it came to me in the middle of the night, and I got up, I wrote it down, and that became by night 10, and it was a one location thing that happens over one night, you know, three characters, and I kind of thought, well, this could be doable for a little nothing, why don't we try and do that? One my risky business moment. Down, 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 Here we are, that was that was in October of 2018, and here we are in March of 2019. Back. Go to him and then we're Three, two, one, action. Because you want to get, you, you, you want to finish. You want to finish. The director and I were working on another script. And we were looking for funding, and he came up with an idea of instead of having a script of lots of locations, more funding, what if we did it in one location? Hey, Walker, do you like that frame? Bloody, Stand that water? Stand by. That's pretty nice right there. So we shot this whole movie in a, in a really small house, and which is a story point. The people are not financially in the greatest space. From there, we moved on and just kind of dreamed of what it would look like to protect your house for a night. Oh, like and then here, like, in the hallway under the stairs. The hallway. <laughs> in that moment. <laughs> the girl, the girl. <laughs> she uses the knife to sharpen it. And then she puts it away. I don't want to lose my knife. You know, so it's your basic kind of fight for survival and also a little bit of uh, romance mixed in a little bit, just the struggle between the couple. Um, the husband and wife, like, what happens when you're thrown into this horrible situation? Like, can your relationship survive? Mark and Heather Barnes are both going through something separately, something that's really uh, affecting them in their lives. Since each of them have their own issues, that's driving a wedge into their relationship because of poor communication and not trusting each other. And along the way, as the night progresses, you know, Moody shows up and, and he starts driving that last nail between them. On a, on a limited budget, don't fight what you have, use what you have. Uh, whether you have $2 million, whether you have $20 million, whether you have $200 million, you've got to stay within your lane of possibility. So one of, the, one of the things you need to figure out in a movie pretty early on is, is the look. We're in one location. How do we keep one location looking interesting? You know, we, we came up with kind of the tone and the, the look for it, Philip and I did together. And a lot of that came out of just sitting in the house and seeing like the lights playing out here and all. The movie took on a mind of its own and it, it kind of pushed us more towards what was there. Um, why fight what we had? One thing we did have, which also impacted um, Walker when he was writing the movie was the street lights. They're these really beautiful orange sodium vapor lights coming in the windows. It set this weird dingy tone, but it's not a dingy atmosphere. A lot of in this movie we're sus where we're suspending reality and, and giving it a really unique look and tone that, like it's based on reality, but it takes a little further to, to give it a cinematic look. Philip's work just pays off. It shows up on screen and it's incredible. It's really beautiful images he captured. We just had that lingo. We were able to click, we were able to communicate, we were able to work quickly. If you just looked at it on paper and, and you look at how much money we had, you would think this, this is impossible. It was really about everyone else uh, that, that was working on this with me. I couldn't have gotten all these people together. I mean, so it was really the team behind me that was making it. Do you want... Hello? No. It's turned into a play. Live performance. All right. Cut. <laughs> that was good. 
So this being my debut film, you know, everyone was not worried, but you know, they were, uh, you know, they wanted to check in on me. So every five minutes, someone would be like, you okay? Hey, you okay? You good? You good, man? You okay? How are you doing? 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 That was the fun thing about the set. It was one unit. It was one team. And um, and we had a lot of fun. This particular crew has been some of the most organically positive, like, enthusiastic people that I've, I've worked with in a long time. I believe that one. <laughs> A lot of us were just marveling at how much fun we had shooting. Yeah, he looks good. What's going on here? What's going on here? It's his new wardrobe. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> We're going flash dance on this thing. <laughs> I was like, wait, has he been wearing a sweater? <laughs> <laughs> That'll slow down our day. <laughs> Do you feel safe? Our crew was phenomenal. Uh, we were very small, but we were very mighty. Costume designer, dude. Most excellent. Got all the duplicates ready. Um, have multiple stages of blood spatter. So. I'm gonna be an actor today. Apparently, there's a lot of cameras on me today. It's a lot. Even Michelle's going at it. Yeah. It's a time, time lapse. <laughs> and the actors are phenomenal. I mean, I knew going in that I wanted Heather uh, to be played by Michelle Rose. I wrote with her in mind. I wrote with Kurt in mind. And then Michael Aaron Milligan, uh, I've known him for a very long time. And the three of them just melded together so well. It's just been this amazingly organic, like, connection. <laughs> because everybody's so invested in this product. You know, yeah, it's Walker's vision, but he gave us a lot of independence and a lot of freedom to create our vision inside of his vision. I think we were supposed to take care of the, uh, walls in the bathroom, but I'd say we took care of it. Three, two, one, action. Oh, shit. The wall was gone. We'll see when we're in there yeah, how much space yeah, we have. Yeah, there's no space. Have so what are we about to do, fellas? Uh, Stunt scene. In the in the cross space. <laughs> it's gonna be a uh, gimbal. I thought this is this is gonna be dumb. This is what I thought. This is not gonna work. It's not a set. It's a practical location. We can't remove a wall and get the camera farther back. People kept going, how are we going to do that? How are we going to do that? that? I don't understand. That fueled me because it's like, cool. If you don't, if you've not seen that before or, or you're questioning how that's going to look, then you're probably going to make something really interesting and different by doing that. In the attic, we turned on one light bulb and we, and we swapped the light bulb to a, a color and that was it. Camera wise, the hardest day for me was the attic. There's a photo of me crammed underneath the rafters to get the shot of Michelle flipping over a bin in frustration. Again, it's real, it's hot. Uh, when you need something, you gotta pass it through the hole in the floor, but also there's no insulation or audio dampening. For some reason, there were like 500 birds outside. In between takes, uh, Jordan Bratton is walking around with wood, clapping them together, trying to get the birds to fly away and shut up. And uh, I don't know how Michelle was able to block all that out. Shut up, birds. Cause she knocked it out of the park without skipping a beat. Right. 
there's a point to it. It's not just a one -er. I mean, there's, there's a story point to it, but also it, you know, makes the house a character. The one -er is there because, you know, she's going and doing recon, so it's kind of like her conscious and, and what she's seeing. All right, so we're gonna start on the laundry room. And this one -er, there there is no digital manipulation. It, it, it's, there's no trickery. It's all one shot. There's one pass off when we go up and look into the windows down the hall. That's the only pass off. Uh, Troy's character comes out, smoking a fake cigarette. It seems insane on such a limited budget to try to do a four minute shot at night in the rain. Uh, that goes all the way around the location and then inside. But uh, I, I, Walker and I talked about that thing for hours and hours and hours. Find something. We're paying off the bat that we heard earlier in the movie, which we haven't shot yet. This oneer had many different iterations. There was one point we were going to go around the entire house. There was. Uh, you know, there was one point where we were going to go through the garage. There was one point where Michelle was going to be hiding more. And it, finally, after many conversations with Philip, it boiled down to, let's go into the house. I didn't think it was possible. That's why I never thought we could do that. But I thought lighting would change too much and, and it just wouldn't make any sense. But Philip, you know, of course, was, oh, we can go through the house. Let's do it. Let's make it, let's make it work. And um, thank God we did. We'll go to the next wall. It's the voice. Please, sorry. Yeah, just Moody. We'll go to the next window, and we'll see you guys. When we placed practicals all around the house, the wonder we had that in mind. What can we do? Because so, we look in a window on one end of the house, and then we go through the house from the other side. You don't have anywhere to hide lights. You can't rig anything from the ceiling. You've just looked 360 floor to ceiling. And so the practicals have to light it. Most times in narrative work, you don't have to worry about that because you'll cut from the house and then you'll go to somebody's apartment and then you cut back to where you are and it's a different time of day, it's a, it's a time jump. And so lamps can change colors and nobody will ever notice. But we have a scene in the dining room followed by a scene in the living room and the floor plan is open concept, so you see both. I thought about checking the shout out back. Lucius's character runs down the hall. And we do an F. And a really special shout out to Robbie the first AC because he did not get to rehearse much. He did not get to take marks. And I cannot tell you how much of that movie is just tack sharp and focus. Uh, we're gonna get a nice quiet beat where we look out here. Creepy. Almost as if, you know, where the heck is Michelle? We have no idea where she is, Heather. We're gonna hear yelling, she's gone. We spin back around and Milligan comes to the door. Mm -hmm. She's gone, go search for her. Find her, check the neighbors, check the field. Check every chicken's little asshole. We end up over here. Turn to an over, give me your flashlight. Troy's character runs out. You, you ask for the flashlight. I really think we did a lot for nothing. And what we did should have been impossible. We're around Troy's character. The door is open, and Michelle is now back on screen with the baseball bat. Dunk. Hits him in the head, and he falls off the porch from the other one. Easy peasy. Easy. Let's do it. Three, two, one, action. So what we did is we rigged up old strobes. You rig them up to a, a button. And so as the actor fires the trigger, they hit a button at the exact same time. It was a really elegant solution to a shootout. On our budget, we weren't able to do a lot of action, but I knew the action that we had, we needed to pull off really well. The flash bowls we used, I think, were one of the best decisions we made on the film. I mean, we get these huge, you know, five frames of flash as it builds and then comes back down. It was a, a much better solution than adding CG uh, muzzle flashes. Settle yes. work quietly. Hey, dude, what's about to happen? <laughs> Me? Uh, there's a guy, the cop comes to the door, and an arrow's about to go through his neck, and they're gonna drag him into the house. The arrow was really important. I knew I wanted that to be real. I wanted to be able to see the arrow there, and, and, and when uh, the actor Jeff flies into the wall, I wanted to see, you know, that arrow just stop him. So, Brittany, they, 
went and bought all these things, you know, an arrow and cut it and, and, and all the whatever it is, the intricacies to make it look the way it did. And it turned out incredible. I, they did a phenomenal job on that arrow. I'm going to add a little more <laughs> blood in Looks pretty brutal, eh? Can I get in here real quick? I need to add more blood. You know, of course, Hitchcock did it. And, you know, there's plenty of other one location films, but it is challenging. I mean, this is a, you know, what, 1,500 square foot house? It's a small house. So how do you, how do you put someone in this position or that position and make it interesting? So how do you feel about today? Tired? I don't know, my final thoughts right now are just how the crew has been. I mean, it's crazy. Everyone's been in such good spirits and hasn't been anything, you know, I haven't really heard. I mean, of course, we're all tired and we all want to be done, but it hasn't been like, oh, you know, I want to be done with this because this movie has sucked. It's, it's a good feeling. So quick statement on what's going on. I saw him win a match, and this is what happened. The house is burning down. Yeah. These next three and a half hours are going to basically decide our, the rest of our day. Essentially. It wasn't too stressful. You know, there were moments, of course, with any movie that gets that way. But for Walker, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, could have asked for a better experience for the first movie. I mean, talk to me about what happened to you. What do you mean? <laughs> you seem like you're a little banged up. No, I, you know, I go out of bed this morning like this. Are y'all sharing in here, bud? Sharing our favorite love songs. Making movies. Making movies. I think the best thing that's come out of this film so far is the lasting relationships we've had. You know, we were a, a really good team. You know, everyone got along together really well. Everyone collaborated really well together. I'm Brittany. I'm the makeup artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to see what I'm doing? What's that? I'm you know, I didn't know a lot of these people coming in, but the producers, you know, Gabby and Ryan and, and Jason, then brought this core team together and... Um, Make movies. I can't wait to work with them again on the next one. What do you think of Jason Wynn? We're worried about his age, his health, he's deteriorating. We think he might have a cane soon, but um, we're there with him to the end, so. <laughs> In a lot of ways, it, f it felt like, wow, this should be impossible. But when you have a good team of people working on something, sometimes impossible becomes possible. Anyway, that's weird. Don't talk to me again. Yep. Okay. okay, cool, let's do it. Okay, we're gonna go one more. Here we go, guys. Rolling, rolling. rolling. Slow around, please.